Okay, guys, so today what we're going to be looking at is uh, synthetic division. Uh, we're going to be looking at the remainder theorem, and we're going to be looking at the factor theorem today. All this is in your notes uh, that we've been going over for the last week or so. And this is found in example two, and this is looking at goal C. So synthetic division is a shorthand or a shortcut method of polynomial division in the special case of dividing by a linear factor. So when I talk about the idea of a linear factor, that's like me talking about x minus a. That's considered to be a linear factor. And it only works in this case. So I can only use synthetic division when I'm dividing by a linear factor. Synthetic division is generally used, however, not for dividing out factors, but finding zeros or roots of a polynomial. And that's what we're going to be kind of doing at the end of today, and we're going to be spending most of next week dealing with that as well. And the remainder theorem states that when we divide a polynomial f of x by x minus c, the remainder r equals f of c. So if I plug whatever the zero is for this binomial, and I plug it into the equation, I will get what the remainder should be. So let's look at some examples of using synthetic division. So what I have here is this is number 20 in your notes. I have x cubed plus 7x squared plus 4x minus 12, and I'm dividing it by x plus 6. So the first thing I want to do is I want to identify the coefficients and constants of the polynomial we're dividing. So I'm looking at this term right here and saying, what are my coefficients and constants? So there's an imaginary 1 right there. So I have a 1, I have a 7, I have a 4, and a negative 12. Okay, and I'm going to put a little box right here for it. Now, here's the other thing. If a term is missing, in this case, if like I didn't have an x squared, then I would put a placeholder there, which would be 0. Okay? And we'll look at some examples of that, especially in class on, on Monday. So, let's look at an example. Let's keep on going. So I've set up, I've done step one. Um, I have a 1, 7, 4, and negative 12. And then I set up synthetic division. I want to identify the zero of the binomial by, we are dividing by. So what I'm going to do is set x plus 6 equal to 0. And I will get x to equal negative 6. So I know that what I'm going to do is use synthetic substitution and substitute negative 6 into it. So I am um, going to automatically bring down the leading term, 1. And I'm always multiplying the bottom row by this number. So negative 6 times 1 gets me negative 6. 7 plus negative 6 is 1. So I'm adding these two terms. I'm multiplying this number by this one. So I have negative 6 again. 4 plus negative 6 is negative 2. And then negative 6 times negative 12 is positive 12. So I have a remainder of 0. So when I take x plus 6 and divide it into this polynomial, I get x. So this is all going down. This is your constant. That's your linear. This is your quadratic term. So I get x squared plus 1x minus 2. That's my quotient when I divide these two terms. Okay. So what I want you to do is look at question number 21. Complete it for class on Monday, and then we'll talk about it. But what I want to do is keep on going on, and I want to look at the factor theorem. And that states that if you divide a polynomial f of x by another polynomial g of x, and your remainder is 0, then that means that g of x is a factor of f of x. So what does that mean? So I want to check to see if either of these two are factors of this. So I want to divide x minus 2 into this. I want to divide x plus 5 into this. So we're going to follow the same steps we did before. Um, both of these could be factors, or none of them could be factors. So what I'm going to do is do the first thing we did before is list the, the coefficients. 3, negative 1, negative 22, and positive 24. We're setting up 
synthetic division. So now what we want to do is substitute one of these terms. So I can set either of these two equal to 0. How about I'm going to start with x minus 2? So I'm going to set x minus 2 equal to 0. And I know that x equals 2. And I'm going to substitute x equals 2 into this term right here. So I'm going to bring down the 3. 3 times 2 gets me 6. Negative 1 plus 6 gets me 5. 2 times 5 gets me 10. Negative 22 plus 10 gets me negative 12. 2 times negative 12 is negative 24, and I get a remainder of 0. So that means that x minus 2 goes into this term perfectly. Okay? And actually what happens is I have x minus 2, and if I take x minus 2 and multiply it by 3x squared plus 5x minus 12, Okay, because I go from constant, that's my remainder, this is my constant term, this is my x term, and this is my x squared term. So I know if I multiply both of these terms, I get this product right here. Now, I have another factor that I want to check out. So I want to check to see, does it work? So now what I want to do is I just want to repeat what I did before. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to kind of have what I had from before and um, I'm just going to do x plus 5 into this because if x plus 5 is a factor of this what I start off with it's going to be a factor of what I have left over so I'm going to set x plus 5 equal to 0 and I'm going to plug it in so I got 3 negative 15 negative 10 and uh, positive 50 and I have a remainder of 38 so this is not a factor so remember what we have is I have x minus 2 times 3x squared plus 5x minus 12 is a factored solution. So let's look at this trinomial right here and say, hey, is that factorable? So I think I get 3x three x minus 4, x plus 3 times x minus 2 is my fully factored out solution. So what I want you guys to do is try question number 24 in your notes and then we can talk about it tomorrow in class. Have a great day.